as we read from Jesus' ministry and the practice of the early church, leaders are always developed for the church. The reason is because leaders will multiply movement, leaders will sustain the movement and the church. And so for this reason, leaders will be developed from inside who are going to be the pastors will have different spiritual gifts as we read in Ephesians 4. And these leaders will carry on with the process of disciple-making movement beyond their own local church. And so this step is so important because when you don't have leaders, then you will not have movement. I want to share the story of a, a lady. It's a lady who comes from a place called Lodwa in Kenya. Uh, this woman is a widow. She has many challenges if you look to her as a human being, but she has understood movement because she has been through leadership development a training that we have offered at, at our place. And so she has been trained and has been equipped. It is very amazing the things she has been able to do in Lodwa. She's been able to launch disciple-making movement there among the Trokana people. She's been able to raise more leaders, like she has opened the whole area, about eight different locations where she has now key leaders leading movement in those areas. And she is doing a very good job by now developing them so that they are able to sustain kingdom movement work in that place as they reach out to the community. So it is very important to make sure that you are lacing leaders for continuity of the movement. Most of the movement that existed around the world are led by people that keeps the movement uh, going. How would you develop these leaders? Where do you find them? Which examples will you use? And in this case, we talk about developing leaders for disciple-making movements. And if that is what uh, we have to do, then we have to go back to the scriptures and learn from the Bible on how those leaders were identified and developed. We read about Jesus. And in his three-year ministry, he had the disciples. He began by inviting them into a relationship according to Matthew chapter 4 says that he was walking along the Sea of Galilee and he saw brothers fishing and he invited a come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And so in, the, in that way we see him inviting people into a relationship to follow him and then he will teach them on how to fish. And so leadership development begins by inviting people. So that's what we read from the Bible. Then after Jesus, we see the early church. The early church, he left behind disciples, and those disciples uh, were part of the first church. The church was born on the day of Pentecost. And that church was formed, and that church grew, and leadership was needed for that church. And it's so clear in the scriptures, Acts chapter 6, we see that the church in Jerusalem had a group of people choosing leaders. They are those who will concentrate on on the ministry of the word and prayer, and the rest will concentrate on serving the people. So leaders who are needed. But another good example in the scriptures is Acts chapter 13. The church in Antioch needed leadership. And so those leaders were raised, they were identified. They had different gifts. Others were teachers, others were prophets. Barnabas and Saul were there. And that church developed and sent the first leaders who left the church to start a new work in new context. Church is organized in a way that it has leaders, be they elders, be they pastors, be they uh, overseers. This all means that they are, the church is organized in a way that it is taken care of. Different leaders are there with different functions and they are leading the church. And so we see that there is what we call the plurality of leaders. Different leaders are there with different functions. 
church is, is not controlled by certain people or some, certain uh, other churches somewhere. A church belongs to Christ. They hear from God and they depend with one another, but they are not controlled by one another. Movement leaders are different types of leaders. This is not about position. One, movement leaders understand the minds of God. There are men and women who will have vision. They will see the bigger picture of God's work and God's movement. They have passion. They have passion for the lost. They have passion for the kingdom of God. These are men and women who are willing to learn. They are teachable from others, from each other, from books. They are willing to learn because leaders who are willing to learn will always grow. And number four, they are leaders who have commitment to movement, you know, depending on the Holy Spirit all the time in their ministries. So these are the kind of people we should look for all the time. And, and you know, when you read in, in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, Paul talks about the gift that was given to the church and why these leaders are needed for the edification of the church until it comes to the point of maturity. Actually, you are training disciples and leaders and disciple makers because they are the people who understand what it is to go and make disciples. So you train them and from there then you invite people who are willing and who are passionate to see the communities being reached and being transformed. So those people who come out with such a desire and such a heart, you build a team so that from there now you mobilize them. One of the very key important principles in uh, disciple-making movements is when we begin with a few leaders towards making many leaders. And um, this is for ensuring multiplication of leaders and sustainability of the disciple-making movement. You see, Paul, talks to Timothy and tells him, the things that you have learned from me, make sure you pass them on. And so what we have found out in doing disciple-making movement is that leadership equals movement. Equipping leaders and mostly leaders that will own the work, will grow the work, and have the work uh, multiply is key. Now, Anything that you do, and you do it without having leaders, will not survive into the next generation. One of our leaders in Northern Kenya, his name is Ado, and here he met one leader there, his name is uh, Joseph Lesamito. And um, Ado introduced Le to disciple-making movement, and after that, Lesamito left that class and went back home. And when he was there, he met another man, his name is Isaiah. And uh, the two of them joined together as leaders. They started mobilizing other people to make disciples. And out of this, they had several trainings and they started developing leaders. From one place, they were able to go to other eight places and they formed different area leaders. After they coached and mentored them and trained them, as a result, um, so many leaders have been developed and they have been able to go to grassroots areas and make other leaders. So we've seen the movement grow unlike other places whereby we depended on one leader who when he leaves or goes to another place, uh, the movement collapses. But when we have leaders, now we are able to go to meet and to reach to other places and make and develop other leaders. We learned this from Jesus. In his three year of ministry on earth, he focused on the 12. And those are the ones that he sent out to go and make disciples. And today, if we have to see disciples made everywhere, we need to make sure that the inside leaders are developed from the church and through these leaders movement will be sustained 
I encourage each one of us today to find leaders. Paul did it the same when he wrote to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. The things that you heard me say in the presence of many, entrust it to reliable men. Today we need to look for reliable men that we will entrust the movement of making disciples to so that this movement will multiply to the ends of the world.